My name is Bob Litchfield. I'm an old bankruptcy lawyer from Auburn, California, and I want to talk to you for a few minutes about where to find the courage to deal with all of the night terrors and the fear that go along with uh, struggling through a financial crisis. This may be for uh, some of you the most frightening thing that's ever happened to you in your life. You might lose your home. You might have to endure humiliating phone calls from debt collection agents. You might not be able to pay the bills. And maybe you've defined your whole life by your income and your status in the community. And now that's all changing and it's so frightening. And some mornings you, you, you have to struggle with where do I find the courage, enough courage, just to get myself up out of bed this morning and go on with, with my day? Well, if you're struggling with where do I find the courage, I want to share a little story with you about one of my personal heroes and where he found his courage. It might help you. This fella, I'm not going to tell you his real name, we'll call him Bill, was a classmate of mine at West Point in the first few horrible weeks of West Point military training that first summer as a, as a freshman, they, in your plea year they call Beast Barracks. Eight weeks of intense military training, uh, somewhat like basic military training, only I think even worse. And uh, it's a very stressful time and the upperclassmen treat the freshmen like subhuman beings and they engage in all kinds of uh, uh, psychological torment as well as physical, uh, intense physical training and sometimes even uh, physical uh, hazing which is supposed to be against the rules but has gone on there since the beginning and uh, is still going on there today I'm sure, uh, unofficially of course. But we had this fellow in, in, uh, in our company, his name, we'll call him Bill, he was from Arkansas and he had a slow southern drawl and uh, it made him seem like he was kind of slow and he had a few problems with uh, keeping his uniform immaculately clean and there's a longer version of this story uh, and you can read about it also in one of my books but the short version is eventually the upper class cadets at West Point decided this fella is never going to measure up to the standards of a, a good West Point cadet and they announced basically Bill so-and-so, we are going to run you out of the Corps of Cadets. We're going to run you out of the Corps. Now that was a horrifying prospect. The upper-class cadets had no legal authority to remove anyone from the Corps of Cadets. Only the commissioned officers could do that. But what the upper-class cadets could do is they could make life so incredibly miserable for an incoming plebe or freshman that um, they would voluntarily resign. And usually, it, once the announcement was made, we're going to run you out of the Corps, if it was a serious announcement, that kid would voluntarily resign from the Corps of Cadets and be gone within a matter of two or three days. They could make your life that miserable. They could arrange it so you didn't get any sleep, you didn't get anything to eat, you were tormented psychologically and physically day and night, uh, a constant, non-stop, psychological torture, sometimes accompanied by physical torture. And that's what they did to this fellow Bill, day and night. They did things to this kid that I can't even begin to describe on a, on a, on a camera. But, and, and everyone around him thought that he would be gone in a matter of two or three days. But here's the thing about Bill. He endured all of that torment, all of that psychological torture, all the physical hazing, and eight weeks later, when Beast Barracks was over, Bill was still there. In the last week of Beast Barracks, we were out on a field uh, training exercise, running through the woods, uh, shooting blanks, and uh, playing war games. And we stopped uh, for a meal, and uh, out in the woods was the one place where they would let us eat our meals in peace and not harass us. Uh, the way they did at the training tables at the uh, at the uh, mess hall on the on the campus. So we're we're out in the woods there, and I see Bill sitting over there on a log eating his lunch. And by now the kid is a phenomenon. I mean he's like a legend in the corps. Other kids talk about him like, did you see what they did to him yesterday? 
I, I can't believe it. How, how does he live through that stuff? But I, I went over and sat down beside him and I said, Bill, I got to know. Why are you still here? I have seen you endure torture and torment like nothing I've ever seen any other human being endure in my entire life. I don't even understand. I don't understand why you even still want to be here. Why would anyone want to be in a place where they get treated like this? How do you do it? Well, Bill looked off in the distance for a minute, and then he looked back at me, and he said, um, you know, I come from a poor truck farm in Arkansas, and I am the first kid in my family that's ever had a chance to go to college. And our farm is so small and so poor, about the only piece of equipment on the whole farm that we actually own instead of having to rent or borrow was my dad's beat up old pickup truck. And even as poor as we were, every year when the crop came in, my dad would set a few dollars aside in a savings account so that someday he could buy a new pickup truck because he spent as much time working on that busted down old pickup truck as he did driving it. And uh, by the time I found out I had a congressional appointment, I didn't get the first uh, uh, position, congressional appointment, to come to West Point. I was only an alternate. And the kid that got the appointment backed out at the last minute. So at the last minute they called me and they said, if you want to go to West Point, you can go in this year's entering class, but you've got to get yourself there, your own transportation. And it was going to cost me about $400 for the transportation to West Point and the money I needed for the initial deposit on the books and the uniforms. I needed $400 and I needed it right away. And I didn't have it. And I didn't have any way to get it. And that was about the amount my dad had saved up in his pickup truck account. So my dad took that money that he had been saving to buy a new pickup truck and he gave it to me so I could come to West Point. And so you see, Bob, someday they might expel me from West Point, but I will never voluntarily resign because my goal is to become a commissioned officer in the United States Army and to make enough money so that someday I can buy my dad a new pickup truck. And he did. He eventually became a fine cadet and a, and a fine army officer and I have no doubt that his dad got that pickup truck. You see, there are many different kinds of courage and they come from different sources. There's the courage that comes from anger, there's the courage that comes from ambition or competition or the lust for money or the competition for a woman. The thing about a lot of those kinds of courage is that they're like a match that you light, you strike a match. They burn hot and intense for a few seconds, but then in the moment when you need them most, they burn out. There is one kind of courage, however, that is self-sustaining and doesn't burn out and will not abandon you in the critical moment. That is the courage that is inspired by love. Over and over again during my life, the thing that I have seen is that it is the courage that is inspired by love that will carry you through the critical moments in life, will not abandon you in the critical moments, will be there every time you need it, and will be there for as long as you need it to get through no matter what you have to get through, including a financial crisis. So if you're in a financial crisis right now and you're struggling to find the courage, how do I get through this? Get real clear about who it is and what it is in life that you truly love. And hang on to those things. Focus on those things. Focus on the people and the things that you truly love. And you will find the courage. That love will give you the courage and it will carry you through whatever you have to get through. And you'll get through a financial crisis or even a bankruptcy. This too will pass. Your life will go on and it will get better. I wish you courage, more importantly even than courage though, I wish you find love and you hold on to the love that you have and that you express all the love that you possibly can as you travel through this life. God bless you. Goodbye.